Hi everyone, happy Monday. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to improve your sleep naturally um, because a lot of times what we see people coming in with are sleep issues, um, whether that's an issue falling to sleep, whether that's an issue staying to sleep, or getting um, restful sleep. So all of those things are important to be going right in our lives. So sleep is important because our body needs time to rest. Um, our organs need time to rest to be able to do, do their jobs efficiently. So so, you know, our digestive system needs to be able to take a break, our brains need to be able to rest, um, our muscles need time to rest. So all of that is really important to have a healthy, um, happy functioning body. So when we're lacking sleep, a lot of things can go wrong. Um, we can have things like brain fog, we can have things like digestive issues, um, we can have things like thyroid issues, we can suffer from headaches or migraines. So there's a lot of things that can happen when our sleep isn't going right or going the way it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mention a few uh, easy ways to implement different things into your life to help out your sleeping routine and your um, sleep hygiene. So the first thing that I want to talk about is number one, um, what I always encourage is implementing a good sleep routine or good habits. That's what we call sleep hygiene. So. What I mean by that is, you know, before bed every night, you, let's just say, let's give an example, you shower or you take a bath, um, you turn off your TV, put down your phone at least one hour before sleep. Um, that's the most ideal. I know we're so attached to our electronics that that can be a complicated thing or a hard thing to do sometimes. We're always go, go, going. Um, but to actually get restful sleep, um, getting rid of those electronics about an hour before bed is the most ideal. The reason behind that is the light that's actually given off from those devices is um, what we call blue light. And blue light, artificial light, mimics the sun. So obviously when you're going to bed, you don't want a light that's essentially waking your body back up and especially our brains. So you want to be eliminating any um, blue light coming from um, T televisions, phones, other devices, we want to get rid of those. The next thing that you can do um, to implement into your bed routine is things like um, breathing techniques or aromatherapy. Um, those are all great ideas when it comes to getting more restful sleep. So getting that bedtime routine down is exactly what you want to do to help your body prepare for that state of relaxation. And then on top of that, you also um, may want to have a book that you read before bed or um, doing any sort of coloring, things like that. Just relaxing the brain, centering yourself on relaxation is what you really want to implement within your routine. Um, some other things that you can do is on my little list back here. So you want to, um, during the day, you want to do a few things because what you do during the day is essentially going to affect how you sleep and how well you sleep. So during the day, you can be, number one, you can be limiting your caffeine intake. So um, making sure that you're not exceeding X amount of milligrams of caffeine per day, it's gonna be helpful. Um, what caffeine does is it wakes our bodies up, it disturbs our adrenals, and a lot of times when we uh, wake up suddenly in the middle of the night, it's actually an adrenal issue. Our adrenals are like shocking us awake um, and making us feel wide awake when we should be restfully sleeping. So in return, we see a lot of um, caffeine issues with that and also hormonal issues. So making sure that you're keeping your caffeine at a good level and then also making sure that you are stopping it at a specific time of day. So, you know, if you drink caffeine until right before bed, I know some people are like, oh, it doesn't bother me, but I'm telling you right now, your body is not getting as restful sleep as it could if you did not drink that caffeine right before bed. Um, so eliminating that when it comes closer to your um, bedtime is a great idea. Um, I would always set like a self, a time for myself every day. Like I usually tr try not to drink any caffeine past noon, um, unless like I'm really on the struggle bus that day. Um, maybe I'll be like, okay, two o'clock is my cutoff for that day. But then again, um, if you are on the struggle bus that day, you need some good sleep that night. So getting uh, closer to the afternoon caffeine is not gonna help your sleep later that night. Um, so then what you wanna do, reduce the caffeine, you want to increase your water intake. So making sure that you're getting enough water during the day 
really really affects your your sleep so have you ever woken up with just like that crazy urge that crazy thirst for water and you're like i need water right now that means your body was not getting enough water throughout the day um and a caffeine um coffee coffee can negate our water intake and dehydrate us um so when you're doing things like drinking coffee or drinking alcoholic beverages um those can cause dehydration and we need water to replace that and if you're drinking those other beverages on top of that you need some some more fluids coming in um so ideally uh, a rough estimate for how many ounces of water your body will need per day um is about half your weight in fluid ounces that's just a good reference point to start with um if you are 150 pounds and you're drinking 75 ounces of water a day um, and you still feel like you could drink more or you're still thirsty go for it like you you can keep replenishing those fluids especially during this time of year when we're sweating and um, we're more physically active out in the sun we're sweating things out more so than we would per se in the winter all right so making sure your caffeine intake is monitored during the day and making sure you're getting enough water are two important things you can do in the daytime to to look out for a better night's sleep okay then another thing that you can do during the day is make sure you're watching your sugar intake so i know we repeat around here how bad sugar is but i'm going to do it again so sugar refined sugar um you know sometimes even fruit sugars can really affect your sleep especially when you eat them more towards bedtime so again sugar is um you know quick energy um it's not long term or sustaining so when you eat sugar closer to bed you're almost like waking your body up a little bit um what's gonna happen is you're gonna wake up a little bit you may have a crash you know get some sleep but then again your your um, adrenals are more than likely going to suddenly wake you up in the middle of the night um and you're not going to be getting that restful sleep that your body needs to relax um, on top of that, especially women who um, deal with different hormonal issues, it's really, really important for you to watch this. I see a ton of connection, and I know Dr. Shannon does too, um, with women going through menopause and going and getting hot flashes at night. When we help them uh, reduce or totally eliminate their sugar um, towards the end of the day um, slash overall, they see a huge improvement with their hot flashes. So hot flashes are really directly correlated to your sugar intake because it's affecting those hormonal organs in a really negative way. So just reducing that overall is going to help with the hot flashes. Um, it's going to help with those sudden awakenings at night that your body is just like, Oop, I gotta be up now. So making sure you're eliminating sugary items closer to bed is ideal. All right, then, you wanna do things to promote relaxation while you're um, getting ready for bed. So there's an array of different things you could do. Um, another thing you can do during the day, just thought of it, exercise is gonna be really important or any sort of physical activity where you're exerting energy because we're getting in energy all day through the food that we're eating. Our food is our energy. So when you're not exerting um, maybe the the surplus of um, energy you're receiving, then your body is just naturally gonna be like, well, oh, I'm kind of just ready for, for more. Well, if you're eating well, you're exercising, um, you're doing some sort of physical activity, and it can be literally, it can be walking, it can be um, yoga, it can be lifting, it can be running. Any sort of physical activity during the day is going to help promote good sleep at night. Um, what you're doing is you're giving your body a nice detox when you're exercising essentially and then you're also burning some of that energy that you have um, that your body is getting rid of so that's a great way to uh, promote great sleep during the day another thing that you can do um, when it gets closer to bed are some more like relaxing practices like some meditation or um, doing some sort of restful yoga so um, that's always a good option to do when it gets closer to bed um, because what you're doing is you're focusing on your breath you're relaxing the body overall and um, doing that is just going to help you um, better be able to absorb oxygen and the body is usually not in a very um, anxious or hectic state when it's receiving the oxygen it needs you're only focused on breathing so that helps relax the body a lot there's a technique um, it's like 
don't quote me. Um, but it's like breathing in for four seconds, holding your breath for seven, and then breathing out for eight seconds is really um, good to promote cardiovascular health. It's good to get oxygen to your cells, to the different things that need that. It's really great for um, bringing your nervous system to simmer down. So that's a good technique to use either before bed, during the day if you're feeling anxious or um, something is going wrong. Just breathing will kind of regroup yourself and bring you kind of back to the present moment. Okay, some other things you can do to promote um, good sleep at night are using things like aromatherapy in your room that you're sleeping in. Um, so using essential oils to help promote sleep, the ones that are calming to our bodies and calming to our nervous systems. So, oops, I have a couple here. So lavender would probably be my number one suggestion. Um, lavender is very soothing, it's very calming. Um, lavender is great to use before sleep. It's also really good if you like do Epsom salt baths or anything like that to relax your body. Um, putting lavender in that is a great idea. Then we have one called Peace and Calming. I wonder what that's for. <laughs> so this one is um, obviously good for just helping things simmer down, um, helping you um, feel a little bit more relaxed. And then also um, for us who, you know, if you have a stressful day or you're feeling more stressed out than normal, there is a essential oil blend called Stress Away that works really great. Um, it's good for diffusing. It's good for actually like physically putting, you know, on your body to kind of alleviate physical tension, any of that, you can use um, stress weight or lavender would be great for that as well. Um, and again, you could also put any of these into like a relaxing magne or Epsom salt bath, um, which Epsom salt is going to be also a great relaxing tool to use before bed. So, you know, you could get a nice bath going, put some Epsom salt, get some candles going, um, really bring yourself down and um, help your body relax. Alright, so when it comes to sleep too, another very crucial element to good sleep is getting enough magnesium. So we don't essentially get enough magnesium within our diets anymore because it comes from the soil um, and our soil has been pretty depleted. So being um, supplemental with your magnesium is really important. Um, especially for um, women with thyroid issues um, are usually pretty mineral deficient so making sure you're getting enough magnesium is um, a great idea if you're on a program here um, and you're interested in getting tested for any of the magnesiums that we have let um, myself or dr. Shannon know and we'll happily do that for you so that you can get the one that best um, suits your body and your needs a couple of ones that we have here I'll go through though so we have this product called Natural Calm. Um, this is a pretty popular product. You may have seen it at some health food stores, um, but what this is is a magnesium supplement. This one in particular also has um, calcium in it. So calcium, just another mineral needed for the body to function right and um, get a restful state of sleep. So what this is gonna do, you're going to um, take this before bed. Um, it's a powder. This one in particular is raspberry lemonade. So it's pretty good. Um, some people find it pretty sour, but I think it, it tastes good. I put a little ice in it and um, it's a nice, cool, refreshing drink. Um, you could drink it warm if you wanted something more um, warm and soothing before you go to sleep. Um, this product in particular also promotes really healthy bowel movements. So if you find that you take it and your stools get too loose, please just cut back on it. Um, it's a totally normal thing if you're taking too much for your bowels to get a little looser than they should be. So um, start off with like one teaspoon and then if one teaspoon is going well for you, um, keep it at that. If you do a teaspoon and you feel like Mm, and still not getting as restful sleep as I want. You could go up to like one and a half, see how that goes. Just whatever works best for your body. And this also comes in unflavored too. Then we have, okay, I think that I will preach for these products because I think these are like my all time favorite, like multi use, sleep, pain, um, menstrual cramps, all the things magnesium oil helps with. So, oh, huge for anyone who suffers with plantar fasciitis, like hands down miracle worker. 
um, pains, anything like that. I actually just had a patient the other day who was having some knee pain and I sent her home with some magnesium oil and she said she put it on and within 10 minutes her knee pain was gone, just gone. She's like, I don't know what that stuff is, but um, so magnesium oil can be really great. Um, another thing that we have that's really great for um, any sorts of aches and pains, sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent here. Um, we're talking about sleep, but one more. Um, plantar fasciitis. So this is huge for that. What you wanna do with this is you actually want to apply it to the bottom of your feet right before bedtime. So once you spray it on your feet, I would do like three, four sprays on each foot, rub it in. Um, it's the most readily absorbed through the bottom of your feet. So that's why I always say that. And obviously plantar fasciitis is occurring in your feet. So you want to put it on the spot where there's the pain. So um, using this before bed is calming to the nervous system. It's calming to the body. Um, it promotes relaxation. So this is the oil. So as you can see, it's like more of like a liquid. This is the actual magnesium lotion that has melatonin in it. So in particular, this one um, is more for sleep, um, but they both work um, for relaxation. But if you were looking for something maybe a little more potent um, that has a little bit higher um, power to it, the, the good night magnesium lotion would be what I recommend. Um, some people don't like the oil that much because it is a funny-ish texture, I guess. Um, so if you're weird about how things are feeling on your skin, there's also a version of this that's just a lotion. Um, and that's really beneficial as well, either one. And then you can also like spray this and then put lotion on over it um, and it will work um, just as well too. Okay, then a couple other things. So, you know, there's all the, the hype and the rage about CBD oil. Um, you know, it's good for so many things, X, Y, Z. Um, we're finding that it is pretty good for people's sleep um, if they test well for it. Um, one of these days, Shin and I will do a video on CBD oil, the, the good, the bad, the in-between, that sort of thing, to give you more information. But we have found people that test well for it, using it before bed for um, good sleep. So we have a brand here called... Um, green roads we have a couple of potencies um we have a muscle and joint cream and there's a skin relief cream i believe too so this has been going well um for people using it before bed for their sleep it just promotes relaxation it promotes um uh like dampening not dampening but like it promotes uh, relaxation of the nervous system overall basically so that's that then um, another thing, since I kind of mentioned caffeine during the day, another thing that you can easily do is swap out your source of caffeine. So swapping out the source, um, maybe you're going to Dunkin' Donuts every day to get your coffee. I don't suggest doing that um, because number one, it's probably filled with sugar if you're not getting it just black. Number two, um, on top of that, the coffee beans that they use at um, most uh, chain coffee shops are going to be filled with chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, that sort of thing, because they're spraying those on the beans um, and then making your coffee with them. So what you can do is uh, we have a organo black coffee here, or there's um, a version called King. These are our mushroom coffees, and um, the mushroom coffee really helps promote overall well-being. It helps promote a good immune system. Um, it helps with things like good sleep essentially because you're not getting a caffeine like jitter high from this so I actually was just telling Kirsten the other day up front um when I drink organo coffee um I don't get like a like a jittery like and I'm pretty even keel when I go out and I have coffee I definitely get that jittery high I'm just like go 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 but then later there's that crash so um, drinking the mushroom coffee helps keep you steady, helps keep you even keel, um, and it promotes good sleep because essentially you're not just like going up and down with your energy and really confusing your body overall. And again, that's because of the uh, mushrooms that are in the coffee. Okay, I think that that is a wrap for everything when it comes to getting good sleep. So we'll just kind of do a little summary. 
So making sure that you're focusing on what you're doing during the day to help yourself at night with your good sleep. So more water, less caffeine, um, less sugar. Those are all going to promote good sleep. Exercising, promoting good sleep. Um, you want to create that before bed routine. Make sure that you're setting your body up and yourself up for a peaceful um, environment. Um, reducing your overall blue light intake with um, eliminating phone time and TV time right before bed. Um, you want to also uh, set the set the room for you know something relaxing or like. Ugh. <laughs> relaxing so using essential oils um, using magnesium oil before bed um, things like that that are going to help promote relaxation as well all of these getting enough minerals are going to help you have a nice restful night's sleep all right I hope that these tips help you and I will be back here on Wednesday and I will be talking about men's health issues um, and addressing those as we approach Father's Day weekend. Just a friendly reminder that our sale this week will be ending Friday um, and that's on our, our Father's Day sale. So we have a ton of things for sale um, right now like uh, some of our more man specific items like deodorants, um, our shampoos and conditioners that don't have um, any uh, girly scents in them. And then things like our meat bars are on sale, um, our bio freeze, which is good for muscle aches and pains um, and joint aches and pains. Um, I'm trying to think chapsticks are on sale too. So um, if you're looking to grab dad or whoever, um, something from there that does end Friday. Um, and we will be uh, celebrating dads and until then. And again, I'll be talking more about men health on um, Wednesday. All right. I hope everyone has a great Monday. And if you guys have any questions or need anything, please feel free to leave uh, a comment below and I can uh, address that. All right. Everyone have a great day.